this module, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to go to the printer. You're going to lift up the blue lever and take out the spindle. Now, it's important to understand a couple of things about the spindle. First of all, the blue colored um, end cap of the spindle is dynamic. It's not fixed. Depending on what size media you're loading, it can come up nice and close so that any size roll of media that you're working with will stay nice and tight. The other thing that I want you to understand about this is that your printer would have come with these things. Do you know what they are? They are um, three-inch core adapters. There are certain types of medias that you might use with your printer that come from third-party companies or fine art media from HP. And the actual core of the media, instead of being a standard two inches, as we see here, might be a three-inch cord, in which case you'll need to use these adapters. They snap right into position. Don't run away. They snap into position on both sides here and on this black end, which is the fixed side of the spindle. When you're done using these, just snap them right back out, put them in a safe place for you to use next time. So, also be careful with this thing. I've seen a lot of people handle it roughly and they can damage it and then it would need to be replaced. So, what I want you to think about in loading media is the direction that the curl of the paper is going to be. It's important that you print on the surface of the paper that is coated to receive ink. So, the media path is the media goes forward and comes around and back towards you. So, keep that in mind when you load media onto the spindle. I'm just going to insert the spindle through the core. I want to make sure that the media is flush up against the black surface. And then on this blue movable end of the spindle, um, I want to point out the fact that there is an open and a locked position. Make sure that you load it in the open position and when it's nice and tight up against the media, move this lever over into the locked position. So once the cap is nice and tight and it's in the, in the locked position, we're ready to pick up this loaded spindle and take it to the machine where we insert it into, into the device. I hope you were able to hear both of those clicks. That means that the media is in position and it's ready to load into the machine. If it is that we were working with the media loading table, probably the process would have looked something like the spindle wouldn't have been on a table, the spindle would have been on the media loading table. We would have threaded the media onto the spindle at that point, and we would have lifted the leading edge of the media loading table, which would have forced the roll back into the loading position. So the printer is um, happily reporting to me that it's ready for paper. So I'm going to start the loading procedure through the front panel. I have an opportunity to do it two ways. I can either use the quick access key or I can go to my personally preferred method into the menu key. I'm going to use my up or down switch and navigate to the paper icon. I'm going to say OK. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my up key to say load paper. And since this is a device that supports roll media, I'm going to say OK to the option to load a roll. And you can see, as I had mentioned in previous module, it's showing an animation on the front panel that will show me exactly how to load media. So what we're ready to do now is to pull a couple of inches of media off of the spindle and move it into the paper path so that the printer will initiate its automatic media load sequence. What's going to happen is I'm going to do my level best to feed it in smoothly and evenly until I hear an audible beep. I should at this point begin to see the paper coming through 
the, the front portion of the printing platen. So in the loading process, the front panel has let me know that I need to make an adjustment. So I'm going to follow the instructions from the front panel and I am going to make an adjustment um, to the position of the paper. As indicated, I'll simply say OK. And it's, I'll be opening the window, lifting the blue media lever, and making adjustments to the position of the media so that the media is on the left edge of this blue half moon shape. When I've positioned the media where I'd like, I'm going to lower the blue lever and close the window as indicated by the front panel. The choice that I make here is extraordinarily important to color consistency, accuracy, and print quality. The printer makes choices about how much ink and what sorts of color tables to use based on the type of media that I load into the printer. The printer only knows what type of media is in the printer because of what I tell it at this point in the media loading process. I have an opportunity to describe how many linear feet of media are on the roll. This is important also because the printer is going to be taking and keeping track of how many feet are used off of the roll. We've now successfully loaded media. From the front panel we can go to one of the quick access keys, the information, paper information button, and we can see the information about the paper I've just loaded. We know that the status of the media is okay, that I'm working with HP Premium Instant Dry Gloss. It's a 42 inch roll and the length is remaining on the roll is 99.7 feet. What we do see is that color calibration on this media type is recommended. One of the things that we can do from the front panel is actuate a color calibration process. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the menu key and I am going to use my up or down switch and go to the image quality maintenance icon and say OK. I'm going to navigate up to an option or down called calibrate color. Once I'm at that option I'm going to say OK and you're going to see that the printer is preparing to execute a color calibration. This is actually the pattern that it will generate when it is color calibrating. Um, one thing that you may or may not notice is that um, it's missing a color and what it's missing in this particular instance is representation of the matte black ink because it doesn't use matte black on a photo gloss media. This pattern is printed out during the color calibration process and then the printer will wait and depending on what media type um, until the ink is dry. It's important to allow it to dry because there's a difference in color between wet and dry ink. In this instance, on photo paper, the dry time is less than two minutes, so it's not anything difficult to endure whatsoever. So please let it dry. The printer then will pull in this pattern, and it will use its onboard I1 spectrophotometer and measure the color. It knows what it's expecting to see. It will take the data on what it does see and make the, um, up for the difference in any sort of delta between what it was expecting and what it actually received. There are a couple of different statuses for color calibration that you might see if you go to the paper information button. One of the conditions of calibration is okay. And what that means is that you're clear and ready to go. One of the options, other options, is called recommended. So I bet you know what that means. It, the printer's recommending that you do the color calibration. Another condition of color calibration is called pending. And what that means is that that particular set of um, media and printhead combination has never been calibrated before, so there's not even old reference data for it to go to. So please do the color calibration. The last status of color calibration is called unavailable. And what that means is that you're working with a particular type of media that you can't color calibrate on. That might include any sort of colored paper, any sort of transparent media, or any sort of particularly textured and glossy, that combination, media that would um, be difficult to grab spectral information from. Uh, that might include um, high glossy canvas. Keeping your device color calibrated 
um, is a very simple thing to do and what it does, color calibration means that your prints are going to be accurate and consistent print to print and day to day. That's exactly what we're after working with a graphics device.